me. And I have a book for you to read, a new book that has Cheerios in it. And with this book, you can play with the Cheerios. And you can put some Cheerios in a little bowl and then do your story. This is called the Cheerios Animal Playbook. Do you like animals? Yeah, Grandma likes animals too. One monkey is having trouble juggling. Can you help him? Yeah, this monkey's juggling his Cheerios and this monkey is juggling his Cheerios. And this monkey, we have to help him juggle. Can you put a Cheerio up there? Can you put another Cheerio there? Another one there? We have a juggling monkey. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah, ooh, ah, ah. Is that what monkeys say? Did you do it? Help the monkey juggle? Good job. Let's see what's on the next page. One seal needs two balls to balance. Do you have any? This seal has two balls. This one has one, two. This seal needs some balls to balance. One, two. Can you put the Cheerios on? All right, good job. Let's see what's on the next page. Not all of the bumblebees. Flowers have Cheerios. Can you put some in their centers? Well, let's see if we can. Let's see if we can put a Cheerio there. Another one right there. Can you do it? Put a Cheerio in here. Did you put all the Cheerios in the flowers? Okay. Good job. One leopard is missing spots. Can you add some spots? This leopard needs spots, Andrew. Let's put one here. There's a spot. And there's another spot. Putting all the Cheerios in the spots. Put this one down here on his foot. Can you do it? Okay. Give the leopards his spots. This page says, can you decorate butterfly wings? I bet you can decorate butterfly wings. Let's see. All of these butterflies right here need some decorating. Can you put a Cheerio right there? And one right there. Can you do it? Put one here. One here. Can you put all of the Cheerios on the spot? to decorate the butterfly wings, Andrew. Good job. Let's see what's on the last page of the book. Oh no! Three owls have lost their glasses. Can you find some? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Those owls have their glasses. What about these owls? They need some glasses. Can you put some Cheerios there? Glasses for the owls. Ooh, ooh. Great job! Thanks. And that is your Cheerios Animal Playbook. Hope you have fun with it, and you can even have a snack. Bye, Andrew.
Sequavion, it's Grandma, and I have a new book for you to read, and it is called The Cheerios Playbook, and you get to play with Cheerios. Now, when you're using this book, you can get some Cheerios like this in the box, or you might be able to have somebody put some Cheerios in a little container like this that you can use while you're reading. Cheerios here. Yummy yum. So here we go. Look, one car has no wheels. Can you fix it? This car has no wheels. So let's put some wheels on it. There we go. Oops. Did you do it? You put the wheels on the car? Good job. Let's turn the page, see what's next. <gasps> Can you put the Cheerios in the empty purple circles? Look at those empty purple circles, Quavion. See if we can put some Cheerios in there, like that. Can you do it? Good job. Can you do it? The yellow fish needs bubbles. Can you find some bubbles for him? The red fish has bubbles. The purple fish has bubbles. We need some bubbles for this yellow fish. Grandpa loves this book. Yeah, making bubbles. Fun. Let's see what's on the next page. Look at the bears. One, two, three, four bears. But one bear is missing his pajama buttons. Find some pajama buttons? I think we can. Can you do it? Cheerios checkerboard. Can you put Cheerios on all the red squares? Let's see. One. Another one. Another one. Cool. Can you do the whole page? That's pretty fun. Good job. And one more page. What does it say? Three mice can't see without their glasses. Can you help them? Let's see. That mouse has some glasses. All those mice have their glasses. <gasps> These mice need their glasses. Let's put some Cheerio glasses on them. Oops, fell down. Can you do it? Put the glasses on them. Did you do it? Can you put one right there? Can you put them right there and there? All right. That is your Cheerios playbook. Have fun. Love, Grandma. And that is your Cheerios. 
Hi, Ethan. It's Grandma B, and I have a book for you that is called Cheerios Count to 100. One zero zero means 100. And you can get some Cheerios out to count with. You can have Mommy take the box of Cheerios and maybe put some Cheerios for you into a container like this with a nice lid where you can have your Cheerios to use. Or you might want a little Cheerios container like this one. Now you may want a table because later on when we start counting by fives and by tens, I'm going to show you how to put the Cheerios out on the table and arrange them so that you can count by fives and count by tens. So get your Cheerios ready and we'll read your book. Good morning. One sun is in the sky. Count one. One. And then find the circle. There's a circle. Number one. One. Cheerio. Can you count one? I know you can count a lot. Go outside and see two houses. Count two. One, two. Find the squares. Can you find all the squares that are in this picture? This window has a lot of squares. There's a square. There, 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 there. This is a square. This is a square. How many squares can you find in this picture? There are a lot of squares. There's two Cheerios. One, two. Look up and find three roofs. Can you count three? One, two, three. Now, see if you can find the triangle. going to tell you. You have to find me the triangle all by yourself. And there are three Cheerios. One, two, three. Walk to the store and see four cars. One, two, three, four. Count four. Now, can you find the rectangles? How many rectangles can you find? There are five stores on the street. Stop and shop for a picnic. Count five. One, two, three, four, five. And then find the oval. Can you find the oval shape up here? Can you count five? One, two, three, four, five. Notice how there are five Cheerios in a group there, because we're going to count by fives later, and we're going to learn how to put the Cheerios in that shape. All right, what comes after five? Six. What should we eat? Buy six sandwiches. Somebody must be hungry for six sandwiches. Can you count all the sandwiches? Are there six? Are you sure? I think you're right. Now, find the square. Can you find the square sandwich? I'm not going to show you where it is. You have to find it. And we have six Cheerios at the bottom of the page. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. There are seven green grapes and there are eight. Boxes of juice. Count to seven and then count to eight. Count the grapes and then count the juice. Then find the circles and the rectangles. How many can you find? And then count your Cheerios. Seven and eight. Napkins help keep us clean. Do you see nine napkins? Count nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And find the diamonds. 
How many diamond shapes can you find? And there are nine Cheerios in the number nine. Guess what's next? Ten! What will we eat our food on? Don't forget ten paper plates. See the ten paper plates? Can you count them? And then find the circles. How many circles are on there? Count to ten. Turn the page. Mmm. <gasps> Brownies are yummy. Will eleven be enough? I'm not sure if eleven will be enough, but that's how many we have. Count eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And there are eleven Cheerios here. Eleven. Let's pay for our lunch, and we will use twelve coins. Count twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve. Thirteen. Time to go. Walk thirteen stepping stones to the park. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirteen. Can you count thirteen? Here we are. Fourteen flags. Wave hello. Count fourteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Let's eat lunch. Spread fifteen blankets on the grass. Count fifteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Was that too fast? Did you get them? And then we have sixteen. First cut each sandwich in half, and then cut it again, and now there are 16 squares. Count 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Did you get it, Ethan? Good job. <gasps> Look, who else is hungry? 17 ants march around the brownie. Count 17. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. The ants go marching round the brownie. Hurrah, hurrah. Count 17. After lunch, it's time to play. 18 swings move back and forth. Count 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. That's a lot of swinging. 19 seesaws go up and down, down and up. Count 19. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Are there 19 Cheerios at the bottom? You'll have to count them and see. On this page, let's ride on the merry-go-rounds. 20 horses go round and round. Twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Hoo-hoo! Now let's start to count by fives. Now see how they're grouping the Cheerios and the kites by fives? I'm going to show you how to do that on the table so that you can practice putting your Cheerios out. And your Cheerios to Now let's start, start five. five. So I can go one, two, three, four, and five in the middle. One, two, three, four, five. That makes
makes a group of five. Let's see if we can make another one. One, two, three, four, five. Can you do that, Ethan? Make groups of fives? Look like this. And then when we have them all, we can go five, ten, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. 50 Cheerios, counting by fives. So you can practice making groups of fun by fives. So you can practice making groups of Did you do it? Let's see. Let's start to count by fives. 25 kites fly. Count 25. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Low, big, bigger, biggest. 30 bubbles go pop, pop, pop. Let's count by fives again. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Or count your Cheerios. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Next page, 35 fish love to swim in the pond. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Did you get them? Did you count by fives? Let's look at the sunflower page. Now let's count by tens. Now I'm going to also show you how on the table to put your Cheerios in groups of tens. Can you count one? Now let's see. Maybe we can make groups of tens. All right. That'll be even trickier. Let's do one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Can you make a group of ten that looks like that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's a group of ten. And we could count by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And there's 50 Cheerios. I wonder if Grandma can eat 50 Cheerios. Two, four, six, eight, ten. I bet I could eat 50 Cheerios. Let's see. Now, let's see. let's see if we can count by tens the sunflowers. 10, 20, 30, 40. Did you get it? 10, 20, 30, 40. Let's see how many other big numbers we can do counting by tens. 50. Sit under a shady tree with 50 green leaves. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Count the Cheerios by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Did you do it? How about the blue eggs? Shh. Don't make a sound. 60 baby birds will soon be hatching. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Can you count the Cheerios by tens? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Good job. All right, Ethan, we're almost done with our book. <gasps> Ice cream cones. 
One last treat, 70 ice cream cones ready to eat. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Look at all the colorful balloons. 80 float up in the air. That is a lot of balloons. Let's count them by tens, starting with the orange row. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. That is a lot. Think we can make it all the way to 100? Let's see the next page. Uh-oh, 90 clouds fill the sky. 90 clouds. Let's see if we can count to 90. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Let's count the Cheerios. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Did you do it? And finally, our last big page. Look at the raindrops. 100 raindrops start to fall. Time to go home. Goodbye. Count to 100. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. 100. Did you count to 100, Ethan? Good job. Did you have fun reading this book and counting to 100? Along the way, did you find circles and squares and triangles and rectangles and ovals and diamonds? Having a Cheerios picnic has never been so yummy. So I hope you had fun with your Cheerios Counting to 100 book. See you later. Six. Hi, Shy. Hope you're having a good day. I have a new book for you, and it is called The Diary of a Spider. And you know how Cervante writes in his journal sometimes? Well, this is about a spider who writes a diary. You know what a diary is? A diary is a book where you write yourself notes about what has happened to you. And this is a spider that does that. So it's called The Diary of a Spider. And inside the covers, there are even pictures that the spider might have that he saved with his diary. Like this feather, it says, cool, huh? Or here it says, family portrait. It's a spider with his family or discovered this neat sculpture, the toilet that he thought was a sculpture. So the inside cover has different pictures the spider might have in his diary. The Diary of a Spider. March 1st. Today was Grandparents' Day at school, so I brought Grandpa with me. He taught us three things. Number one, spiders are not insects. Insects have six legs. Number two, without spiders, insects could take over the world. And three, butterflies taste better with a little bit of barbecue sauce. March 16th. Grandpa says that in his day, flies and spiders did not get along. He has a newspaper article about that. But things are different now. This is awesome. He's a fly. He has a best friend that's a fly. March 29th. Today in gym class, we learned how to catch the wind so we could travel to faraway places. Next, Woo. when I got home, I made up flashcards so I could practice. 
The splash cards say number one, climb high. Two, release silk. Three, catch wind. Fly made up her own flash card. Number one, fly. I'm starting to see why Grandpa doesn't like her. Obviously, flies don't have to work as hard to fly. April 1st. Went to the park with my sister today, and we tried the seesaw. It didn't work. We tried the tire swing. It didn't work. We spun a huge sticky web on the water fountain. Eek! That worked. April 12th. Today was safety day at school and we learned that vacuums eat spider webs and are very, very dangerous. If we hear a vacuum, we should stop, drop, and run. Stop what we're doing. Drop from the web. Run like crazy. April 13th, we had a vacuum drill today. I stopped what I was doing, forgot where I was going, and ran screaming from the room. Help! We're having another drill tomorrow. I guess Spider had trouble with the vacuum drill. April 17th, I'm sleeping over at Worm's house tonight. I hope they don't have leaves and rotten tomatoes for dinner again. Mrs. Worm says, here, more leaves, spider? Leaves and rotten tomatoes. May 7th, mom said I was getting too big for my own skin, so I molted. There's your dead skin. That is so gross. That's what Worm thought. May 8th. Today was show and tell, so I brought in my old skin. My teacher called on it to lead the Pledge of Allegiance. You there, why don't you get us started? There's Spider. There's his dead skin that the teacher called on to lead the Pledge of Allegiance. June 5th. Daddy Longlegs made fun of Fly because she eats with her feet. Now she won't come out of her trance. I'm going to find him and give him a piece of my mind. So off Spider goes to give Daddy Longlegs a piece of his mind. June 6th. I found Daddy Longlegs and he's a lot bigger than I thought he was. So I gave him a piece of my lunch instead. June 7th. Fly's treehouse blew away in the wind today. So did Grandpa. June 18th got a postcard from Grandpa today. Dear Spider, ooh la la, I landed in Paris. French bugs are delicious. Au revoir, Grandpa. Leg of a French gnat. Give it a try. Grandpa taped it on the postcard. June 30th, Grandpa came home today. I couldn't wait to hear about how he rode the winds all the way over the ocean. Turns out he caught a breeze to the airport and napped in first class. July 2nd. Fly came over to play today. She got stuck in our web and her mom had to come get her. Hi, Mom. Grandpa laughed a little too hard. From now on, we have to play at Fly's house. July 9th. Today was my birthday. Woohoo! Grandpa decided I was old enough to know the secret to a long, happy life. Never fall asleep in a shoe. Secret of a long, happy life. For a spider, I guess. Might be true. July 16th. Things I scare. Why is mom? It wasn't his fault, mom. 
tiny bugs, and three people using the water fountain at the park. Those are all things with the, with the spider scares. July 17th, things that scare me. Number one, daddy long legs. Number two, vacuums. And number three, people with big feet. No! August 1st. I wish that people wouldn't judge all spiders based on a few spiders that bite. I know if we took the time to get to know each other, we would get along just fine. Just like me and why. some more pictures that Spider has with his daughter. You can read what those say. So, Sean, I hope you enjoyed the book, Diary of the Spider. And June 1st on the back. Made a new friend today. He's big. Love you. Bye-bye. Savante, it's Grandma. Hope you're having a good day today. I have bought you a new book for Christmas, and it's called Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein. It's a really big book, but it has lots of little poems in it. And when your mommy was little, she and Uncle Ben and Aunt Trish and Aunt Trevor and then Uncle Aaron and then Aunt Rochelle all read poems out of this book and they thought that they were pretty good. So I thought you would like them. And I'm only going to read a few today for you and I'll tell you what pages those are on. But then you and Mom and Dad and Shy and Squavion can read the rest. So this is where the sidewalk ends. We'll start with the very first one on page 9 that's called The Invitation, because it's kind of the invitation to read the book. If you are a dreamer, come in. If you are a dreamer, a wisher, a liar, a hoper, a prayer, a magic bean buyer, if you're a pretender, come sit by my for we have some flax golden tails to spin. Come in. Come in. That was invitation. This next one's on page 12, and it's called The Boat. Now you also have to look at the picture sometimes in these poems. The homemade boat. This boat that we just built is just fine. And don't try to tell us it's not. The sides and the back are divine. It's the bottom, I guess. We forgot. And I guess the bottom of the boat would be kind of important. So they all sunk. This is one of my favorites. It's on page 17, and it's called Ickle Me, Pickle Me, Tickle Me Too. Ickle Me, Pickle Me, Tickle Me Too went for a ride in a flying shoe. Hooray! What fun! It's time we flew, said Ickle Me, Pickle Me, Tickle Me Too. Ickle was captain, and Pickle was crew, and Tickle served coffee and mulligan stew. As higher and higher and higher they flew, Ickle Me. Tickle me, tickle me too. Ickle me, pickle me, tickle me too. Over the sun, beyond the blue. Hold on, stay in. I hope we do. Cried Ickle me, pickle me, tickle me too. Ickle me, pickle me, tickle me too. Never returned to the world they knew. And nobody knows what's happened to dear Ickle me, pickle me, tickle me too. Don't know what happened to them. It's a mystery. On 
on page 18, there is one called Captain Hook. Captain Hook must remember not to scratch his nose. Captain Hook must, must watch out and never pick his nose. Captain Hook must be gentle when he shakes your hand. Captain Hook must be careful opening sardine cans and playing tag and pouring tea and turning pages of his book. Lots of folks I'm glad I ain't, but mostly Captain Hook. Now I'm kind of glad I'm not Captain Hook too. He has a lot of problems. Now on page 25, and again you might have to watch to look at the picture, page 25 is called The Loser. Mama said I'd lose my head if it wasn't fastened on. Today I guess it wasn't, because while I was playing with my cousin, it fell off and rolled away. And now it's gone. And I can't look for it because my eyes are in it, and I can't call to it because my mouth is on it and couldn't hear me anyway because my ears are on it and I can't even think about it because my brain is in it so I guess I'll sit down on this rock and rest for a minute. Lost his head. Don't want that to happen to me. Page 27 is called Listen to the Mussets. Listen to the mustn'ts, child, and listen to the don'ts. Listen to the shouldn'ts, the impossibles, the won'ts. Listen to the never has, and listen close to me. Anything can happen, child. Anything can be. That's a good one. Anything can happen. Anything. Oh, this was Ben's favorite, my Uncle Ben's favorites, Jimmy Jet and his TV set, it's on page 28. I'll tell you the story of Jimmy Jet, and you know what I tell you is true. He loved to watch his TV set almost as much as you. He watched all day and he watched all night till he grew pale and lean. From the early show to the late, late show and all the shows between. He watched till his eyes were frozen wide and his bottom grew into his chair. And his chin turned into a turning dial and the antennae grew out of his hair. And his brains turned into TV tubes and his face to a TV screen. And two knobs saying Bert and whores grew where his ears had been. And he grew a plug that looked like a tail. So we plugged in little Jim. And now, instead of him watching TV, we all sit around and watch him. I think that's a funny story. All right, this is the early bird. Oh, if you're a bird, be an early bird. And catch the worm for your breakfast plate. But if you're a bird, be an early, early bird. But if you're a worm, sleep late. That's a good, good philosophy. If you're a worm, sleep late. On page 32, the farmer and the queen. She's coming, the farmer said to the owl. Oh, what shall I, what shall I do? Shall I bow when she comes? Shall I twiddle my thumbs? The owl asked, The queen, the queen, the royal queen shall pass by the farm today. Shall I salute? He asked the horse. The horse said, Nay. Shall I give her a gift? He asked the wren. A lovely memento for her to keep. An egg or a peach or an ear of corn? The wren said, cheep. But should I curtsy or should I cheer? Oh, here's her carriage now. What should I do? He asked the dog. The dog said, bow. 
And so he did, and so she passed. Oh, tra-la-la-la-la. -la -la. She smiled, she did, he told the sheep. The sheep said, Bah. That's what happens when you talk to animals. Here is a lesson on money on page 35 called Smart. See if you think this boy is really smart like he thinks he is. My dad gave me one dollar bill because I'm his smartest son. And I swapped it for two shiny quarters because two is more than one. And then I took the quarters and I traded them to Lou for three dimes. I guess he don't know that three is more than two. Just then along came old Blind Bates and just because he can't see, he gave me four nickels for my three dimes, and four is more than three. And I took the nickels to Hiram Combs down at the seed feed store, and the fool gave me five pennies for them, and five is more than four. And then I went and showed my dad, and he got rid of the cheeks, and closed his eyes and shook his head, too proud of me to speak. Proud? Oh, I like this one on page 44 and 45 called Boa Constrictor. I used to make it into a song. Why well, I'm being eaten by a boa constrictor, a boa constrictor, a boa constrictor. I'm being eaten by a boa constrictor. And I don't like it one bit. Snibbling my toe, oh gee, it's up to my knee, oh my, it's up to my thigh, oh fiddle, it's up to my middle, oh heck, it's up to my neck, oh dread, it's up. <laughs> Got swallowed by a boa constrictor. And I don't like it one bit. Well, here on page 58 and 59, Somebody that was sick and couldn't go to school. Or so, she thought. I cannot go to school today, said little Peggy Ann McKay. I have the measles and the mumps and gnash, a rash and purple bumps. My mouth is wet, my throat is dry. I'm going blind in my right eye. My tonsils are as big as rocks. I've counted 16 chicken pox. And there's one more that's 17. And don't you think my face looks green? My leg is cut. My eyes are blue. It might be instamatic flu. I cough and sneeze and gasp and choke. I'm sure that my left leg is broke. My hip hurts when I move my chin. My belly button's caving in. My back is wrenched. My ankle's sprained. My appendix pains each time it rains. My nose is cold. My toes are numb. I have a sliver in my thumb. My neck is stiff. My voice is weak. My tongue is filling up my mouth. I think my hair is falling out. My elbow's bent. My spine ain't straight. My temperature is 108. My brain is shrunk. I cannot hear. There's a hole inside my ear. I have a hangnail and my heart is... What? What's that? What's that you say? You say today is Saturday? Goodbye. I'm going out to play. Guess she wasn't that sick depending on what day it is. And here's somebody else that was a little sick. It's a crocodile that had a toothache on page 66. The crocodile's toothache. The crocodile went to the dentist and sat down in the chair. And the dentist said, now tell me, sir, why does it hurt and where? And the crocodile said, I'll tell you the truth. I have a terrible ache in my tooth. And he opened his jaw so wide, so wide, that the dentist, he climbed right inside. And the dentist laughed, oh, isn't this fun? And he pulled the teeth out one by one. And the crocodile cried, you're hurting me so. Please put down your pliers and let me go. But the dentist just laughed with a ho, ho, ho. And he 
he said, I still have 12 to go. Whoops, that's the wrong one, I confess. But what's one more crocodile's tooth, more or less? Then suddenly the jaws went snap, and the dentist was gone, right off the map. And where he went, one could only guess, to north or south or east or west. He left no forwarding address. But what's one dentist, more or less? I guess the dentist shouldn't have said that about the crocodile. And this is one last poem about Sarah Cynthia Sylvia Stout, who would not take the garbage out. This was another favorite one of your mom's, and Uncle Ben, I think, especially liked this one. Let's see what happens. Sarah Cynthia Sylvia Stout would not take the garbage out. She'd scour the pots and scrape the pans, candy the yams and spice the hams, and though her daddy would scream and shout, she simply would not take the garbage out. So it piled up to the ceilings, coffee grounds, potato peelings, brown bananas, rotten peas, chunks of sour cottage cheese. Filled the can, it covered the floor, it cracked the window and blocked the door with bacon rinds and chicken bones, drippy ends of ice cream cones, prune pits, peach pits, orange peel, Gloppy gloves of cold oatmeal, pizza crust and withered greens, soggy beans and tangerines, crusts of black burned buttered toast, gristly bits of beefy roast. The garbage rolled on down the hall. It raised the roof. It broke the wall. Greasy napkins, cookie crumbs, globs of gooey bubble gum, cellophane from green bologna, Rubbery, blubbery macaroni, peanut butter caked and dry, curdled milk and crusts of pie, moldy melons, dried up mustard, eggshells mixed with lemon custard, cold french fries and rancid meat, yellow lumps of cream of wheat. At last the garbage reached so high that finally it touched the sky and all the neighbors moved away and none of her friends would come to play. Finally, Sarah Cynthia Stout said, okay, take the garbage out. But then, of course, it was too late. The garbage reached across the state, from New York to the Golden Gate. And there, in the garbage she did hate, poor Sarah met an awful fate that I cannot right now relate because the hour is much too late. But children remember Sarah Stout and always take the garbage out. So, Savante, those are just a few of the poems that are in this book, and I hope that you really like reading it. Love you.